Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for August 3rd, 2021. Glad that you are with me. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you call us to a new way of life in your realm of grace and peace. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let your will be done in our lives and in this world that you love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today are Psalm 12 and 146, 2 Samuel 7, 18 through 29, Acts 18, 12 through 28, and Mark 8, 22 through 33. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Psalm 12. Help, O Lord, for there is no longer anyone who is godly. The faithful have disappeared from humankind. They utter lies to each other with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips the tongue that makes great boasts. Those who say, with our tongues we will prevail, our lips are our own, who is our master? Because the poor are despoiled, because the needy groan. I will now raise up, says the Lord, I will place them in the safety for which they long. The promises of the Lord are promises that are pure, silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. You, O Lord, will protect us. You will guard us from this generation forever. On every side the wicked prowl, as vileness is exalted among humankind. Psalm 146 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes in mortals in whom there is no help. When their de- breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. God upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked God brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. 2 Samuel 7, 18-29 Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes. O Lord God, you have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. May this be instruction for the people, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God, because of your promise. And according to your own heart, you have wrought all this greatness, so that your servant may know it. Therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is no one like you, and there is no God besides you. According to all that we have heard with our ears, who is like your people, like Israel? Is there another nation on earth whose God went to redeem it as a people, to make a name for God's self? doing great and awesome things for them by driving out before God's people nations and their gods? And you established your people Israel for yourself to be your people forever, and you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, as for the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning God's house, confirm it forever. Do as you have promised. Thus your name will be magnified forever in the saying, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel, and the house of your servant David will be established before you. 
For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. Acts 18, 12 through 28. But when Galileo was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal. They said, This man is persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to the Jews, If it were a matter of crime or serious villainy, I would be justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names and your law, See to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of these matters. And he dismissed them from the tribunal. Then all of them seized Sosthenes, the official of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. Tribunal, But Galileo paid no attention to any of these things. After staying there for a considerable time, Paul said farewell to the believers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At Sincre, Sincre, I'm not sure how to say that one, he had his hair cut, for he was under a vow. When they reached Ephesus, he left them there, but first he himself went into the synagogue and had a discussion with the Jews. When they asked him to stay longer, he declined, but on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus. When he had landed in Caesarea, He went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church, and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he departed and went from place to place through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well-versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. And when he wished to cross over to Achaia, the believers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, he greatly helped those who through grace had become believers, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. And our gospel reading, Mark eight twenty two through 33. They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? The man looked him up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. He sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. So our readings for today, I'll just make a note that Psalm 12 strikes me very much so that it starts with, let me get the first lines. Um, Help, O Lord, for there's no longer anyone who is godly. The faithful have disappeared from humankind. They utter lies to each other with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. I always imagine that this one is written um, kind of not long after David has become king and he's surrounded with all these sort of like sycophants. He's been out in the wilderness, you know, with rough and tumble people who have to be very sort of uh, sincere and very um, direct. And he's suddenly surrounded by all these other people who, you know, have kind of flattering tongues. He's kind of overwhelmed with it. Anyways, um, our first reading from 2 Samuel, we have David. um, And remember, he said he wanted to build this house for God. And God replies, no, I don't build me a house, but I will build you a house. And so we have these, this beautiful sort of prayer to God from David. One of the, the benefits that we have of the story of David is that there's actually more written by and about David than anyone else in the Old Testament. We have a glimpse into sort of his prayer life. Um, and, you know, he returns to God and says, you know, I'm, I'm really flattered. I thank you so much for this, um, the opportunity of what you want to do in and through me, but it's all about this praise, right? God, I know that it's not me that, you know, I'm not the reason that I'm being blessed, right? You're the reason that I'm being blessed. It's because of your good grace. He knows maybe because he he has seen Saul and all that Saul had the potential to be and how Saul fell from that, Um, how he was rejected by God Um, because of his own actions, David knows, you know, God, you wanting to bless me, you know, thank you, but I know it's not because of me, it's it's because of you. Um, That's very much sort of the tone of this. Um, He's very grateful that that God would bless he and his household, Um, but David is also concerned that the glory of God be lifted up. Um, One of the things, you know, this is a very different response than Saul had. Um, This is why this David is described earlier as being a a man after God's own heart. Now, he's definitely got some flaws and some things to deal with, um, but his response is genuine. His response is good, right? He doesn't have flattering lips like he complains in Psalm 12. He, um, He thanks God, but he also knows that... um, you know, there by by the grace of God, I could I could be in a very different situation. Then we have from Acts, um, we have this this issue with Galileo, who is the proconsul of Achaia, and the Jews come and they're speaking directly against P, uh, Paul and the the ruler. He's a Roman ruler, and he says, you know what, I I don't care about all this stuff, right? If you had a legitimate concern. If he was a, an enemy of the state, something like that, I could listen to that. But I don't want to sort out who you think is this Messiah or whatever. Like, that's, I don't care. I don't care. And in fact, it gets to the point where they beat somebody up, the, the leader of the synagogue who became a Christian, in front of the, of like the Senate building or the, um, like the courthouse, basically. And he didn't care. He didn't care at all. Um, Paul leaves uh, uh, Priscilla and Aquila in, um, not Caesarea, but in Ephesus. And he goes off and he kind of tours around, checks out the other churches. He goes back to Judea and checks out the churches around there. And we have this other story about Priscilla and Aquila. Interesting note that we might uh, pay attention to is Priscilla is always noted first. She's the woman of this. It's a couple, right? Um, Priscilla is the woman and Aquila is the man. She's always, always noted first, um, which is just an interesting thing. Maybe just because Priscilla and Aquila, Priscilla, it just sounds better, but I think it maybe she, she kind of really is the, the forefront. She is the minister here and Aquila is, assists her, but she's, she's kind of the 
the she's in charge, right? Um, and we have this interesting story about Apollos. Now, Apollos is a, a Jewish man, um, but he has a Greek name. So that maybe gives us an idea of what's going on. And he comes in and he's very charismatic. He's a good speaker. He's able to refute and, and argue and um, convince folks that Jesus is the Messiah. But there is something that he is missing. He understands the baptism of John, that is a baptism of repentance, right? This sort of a sign of washing away our sinfulness, and um, and now you're sort of a clean slate, which is absolutely part of what baptism is. But he is missing out on the baptism of Jesus, which is something more even that. It's, as Paul describes, it is almost a dying uh, to sin, a dying to the law, and a being reborn, just as Jesus um, died and was resurrected. So in baptism, we die and are born anew. Um, we are now lo- no longer slaves to the law. We're no longer slaves to sin, but we are now set free be- through that death of Jesus Christ, united in a death like his, and may and also united in a life like his, we now have something new, right? So Apollo doesn't understand this. He doesn't get this particular um, theological note. And so Priscilla and Aquila, they hear him speak. They, they see that he has all these qualities and these gifts for, for rhetoric. And they pull him aside and they say, hey, you know, let's uh, sort of expand your understanding of this. Um, they explain the way of God to him more accurately, right? Um, sometimes we, re- we miss this. Sometimes we forget this, that part of our call is, is to come along one in- alongside one another, to, to learn and grow with one another. If we hear that someone's kind of missing the mark, then we can kind of help and, and talk through these things. Think of a- Apollo, who you know, maybe has, has uh, so far has obviously has these skills and these abilities to preach and to teach. Um, and he takes this correction. He says, you know what? I, I am missing that. I didn't know about that. And so then he goes on and, and uses it. Not coming together and learning and growing with one another is what we're called to do. Um, we don't, we're not supposed to, though we often do, sort of separated ourselves if we disagree about things. You know, we have, we in the Reformed tradition have a lot of differences to our siblings in, say, the Pentecostal church or our siblings in the evangelical church. Um, there are differences that we have. There are things that we don't see um, see eye to eye on necessarily and don't agree on. Does that mean that we distance ourselves from one another? Or does that mean that we come alongside each other we learn from one another. We uh, encourage one another in our gifts and abilities. Um, maybe we go away with a new understanding and, a, and a, a more accurate understanding of who God is. And sometimes we go away having our same beliefs, but at least it being more strengthened and our understanding of how other people may see the same situation um, a little bit differently. So just, I think that that connection between Apollo, Priscilla, and Aquila um, just sort of reflects that. Then we have um, the end of this sort of section of Mark and the beginning of a new one. So up to this point, it's been Jesus's early ministry. Jesus has been healing and teaching, and the crowd has been sort of this um, on again, off again, sort of good sometimes, sometimes it's a little oppressive. Um, and there's been this implicit question, who is this man? Who is this person, right? So we have this um, really interesting story. This section, again, begins with the healing of a blind man. Jesus takes him aside, um, makes mud, and puts it in his eyes with saliva, and says, can you see anything? And it doesn't quite work. He says, I see some things, but people look like trees. They're all sort of weird and elongated. So he does it again. Um, It's strange that Jesus isn't able to just like heal this person, but it does as a thematic um, sort of unit um, connects this 
section to the end of this section of Jesus's sort of teaching and healing in his later ministry, where there will be another blind man who he heals immediately. These are the only two blind men um, healed in Mark's gospel. So it, it's creating this uh, sort of thematic movement. And we have uh, Jesus coming with his disciples to Caesarea Philippi, and he asks the question that has been implicit up to this point, who do people say I am? Who, who is this person? And they give all sorts of answers, some of the, which we have heard, some of which we have not. He says, who do you say that I am? And Peter, again, always the first to speak, not necessarily, not necessarily to think, but always to speak first. He says, you are the Messiah. Here's the answer. You are the one that we have been waiting for. You are the anointed one. And immediately, we are now entering into this next section. Well, what does that mean? And Jesus immediately starts to tell his disciples, yes, don't tell anybody about this, right? Because it doesn't need to get out there. Um, There's lots of reasons for that. Um, But partially because of the way he is Messiah, as opposed to the way that they're expecting him to be Messiah. And he tells them that the Son of Man must be betrayed, turn over to the authorities, and he's going to die. But on the third day, he's going to rise, and they don't understand it. Peter says, no, (laughs) you're talking crazy. Be quiet. And Jesus says, no, get behind me, Satan. You're talking about the things of this world. I'm talking about the things of heaven. And so now the implicit question um, for this next section of Mark is, who is this Messiah? What, what does that mean to be Messiah? And that will be answered as we go on. So those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We give you our praise and thanks, O God, for all gifts of love we have received from you and from your persistent mercy in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the grace and peace of Jesus Christ. All creatures with whom we share the earth. Those whom we have loved and who have loved us. Support and encouragement from others. Food and drink to share in your name. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for this day, for the rain that is falling right now as I am recording the blessings of God's goodness. We give you our cares and concerns, O God, because we know you are kind and care for your children in every circumstance. Especially we pray for Lutheran and Reformed churches. People who live in poverty. Those who are sick or suffering. those who work for their healing. Comfort and peace for those who are dying. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Lynn, a friend of Bill's sister, whose husband, Jim, died last week. We pray for Pam, a friend of Bill's, who is back home from the hospital but continues to have health concerns. For Rebecca, a close friend of the Marlowe family who is undergoing surgery to repair a broken arm. We have an online silent prayer for a friend facing medical issues. We pray for Mary who slipped at work. For Sandra, 
a friend of the Price's whose husband fell and hit his head and died as a result. For Nick, who's having knee replacement. For Ernie, who's also having knee replacement. For Barbara, who is continuing to figure out health issues. And for an online request from Sandra for her family and their health. To you, O God, we give up the burdens of this day, trusting your love and mercy. To you, O God, we surrender ourselves, trusting our risen Lord to lead us always in the way of peace, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Now let us continue to praise you in the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now let us cast our anxiety on the Lord who cares for us. The God of all grace will restore, strengthen, and support us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.